Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In this Edge TX snippet, I'm gonna cover some special system files on the Edge TX firmware that you probably need to be aware of, especially if you're converting from OpenTX. On the last pilot jam I did, I went through this during the pilot jam where I did a little carve out and showed some of the special system files that you need to be aware of if you're managing an Edge TX radio, especially if you're making the conversion from Ed OpenTX to Edge TX. And the reason for that is because I get questions quite a bit around what happens during the conversion, where do my files go, how come my radio is saying the wrong thing when it starts up and how do I fix it? So I thought I'd put together this quick little snippet to walk through some key system files on Edge TX that you need to be aware of in the Edge TX firmware. I have the list up on the screen and we're going to start right away by diving into the system sounds. Before we look at the SD card contents, let's take a look at the Edge TX GitHub so you know where to find these files anytime you want. Open up github.com slash edgetx in your browser. Don't worry, I'll have a link in the description so you can get there quickly. And once you're on the Edge TX GitHub, scroll down to the SD card sounds link. And when you click on that, you'll be brought to a page that shows all the releases for SD card sounds for Edge. On the right hand side, the current release is 2.5.4. If you click on that, you'll be presented with a list of options you can download. They've got Chinese, Czech, German, English, a couple of variants on English, including Libyan Ryan, Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, and Russian. So pick the language that works for you. In my case, I'll choose English 2.5.4.zip, and that's where you get the SD card contents for your radio. Now that I have the English sound pack downloaded, let's take a look at the SD card itself. So this is a backup copy. This isn't actually on my radio, but it's an exact copy of what's on the radio you want to look for a directory structure that looks something like this. You should see folders like images, logs, models, radio, screenshot scripts. These are the types of folders you see that, let, that lets you know you're in the right spot. In order to update our radio to use the Edge TX sound pack, we'll go to the sounds folder, right click on the EN folder. In my case, it's EN. In your case, it might be ES or FR or RU. It depends on your language. In my case, it's EN. I'll right click on that and then click delete. And when I do that, that basically blows away all the sounds on my radio. Now I'll open up that zip file that I downloaded from the Edge TX GitHub. And in that sounds directory, there's another folder called EN. I'm simply going to drag that over to the same location on my SD card and let it go. That should unpack everything and install the Edge TX sound pack on my SD card. Now I do have to give you a warning. If you've used custom sound packs like Amber in the past, be very careful doing this. You may not want to blow away that EN directory if, because the Edge TX sound pack doesn't have all the custom audio prompts that Amber provided. If you weren't using custom audio, audio sound packs like Amber, then there's really no harm in doing this. It's simply going to replace the standard OpenTX files with the Edge TX files. Now let me show you on the special file list here on the left hand side, we've got this folder called sounds en. Remember this en could be different depending on your language. And then system hello. If we navigate to en system and then look for the file called hello, that's the file that greets you when you boot the radio up. When you turn it on, it's the one that says welcome to Edge TX. And I'll show you that by clicking on it. Welcome to Edge TX. Okay, if your radio says welcome to OpenTX, this is the file that's saying that. And that's why by deleting the EN folder and everything underneath it and replacing it with the Edge TX sound pack, you get rid of the welcome to OpenTX sounds and you now are converted to welcome to Edge TX for sounds. Okay, that's the first one. The second special file is called the models.yaml file. And we need to talk about this a little bit because Edge TX introduced a file format called YAML. And the idea is that your models and your model configurations are now stored in this file format. And the thing that's special about it is this file format is human readable. So we can click on models.yaml and open it up. You can see when you open up this file, what's displayed. You can see I've got a category called Warbirds. And within that category, I've got one model called Model 19. That's a P51 Mustang. I've got another model called Model 23, and that's a Corsair. And then I have another category called Quads, and that's Model 25. That's my Nazgul 5. If we look at my radio and I click on Model Select, you can see that I've got a category called Warbirds. 
I've got another category called quads, and then I have this default category called models. That's just by the radio. The radio does that. You can ignore that. That's not part of the models.yaml file. But you can see that in the top row, we've got warbirds and quads. That corresponds to models.yaml. Models.yaml is what defines this kind of category look on your radio. It's the thing that shows what models are in what folders and what models you have on your radio. It lists them. It's kind of like a table of contents. So that's models.yaml. Now I've had questions about rearranging things. If you wanted to switch the order of these, you can simply go into your editor, highlight a section, erase it, and then paste it in. And then as long as you don't mess up the formatting, that would rearrange this category format on the radio. It would put quads first and warbirds second. Likewise, you can go in and rearrange the file names within a category if you wanted to. If I wanted that Corsair to be displayed first, I could simply delete it and then paste it in on top of the Mustang, and that's how it would display on the radio. That's one of the cool things about the model's YAML format is that you can edit it by hand if you want and rearrange things until they suit you. Okay, so that's models.yaml. Next up is the background. This is another question I get quite a bit, and that's how do I change the default background? So if you're not using themes, it's important to understand that EdgeTX introduced this concept of themes. If you use a theme with a current version of Edge, the theme will specify a background. If the theme doesn't specify a background, the default is used, and that file can be found in the themes folder under default and there's a file called background.png and when you click on it you can see that's the file that we're all used to seeing on our radios by default that's the standard background on edge tx so if you want to change that you simply replace this file with your own background.png and that will be used as long as you're not using a theme that specifies a background one other thing i want to call out about this file if you look at the properties on this one let's take a look at the details real quick Notice the dimensions of this image are 480 by 272. That specifies the layout of your screen. So you want it to be 480 wide by 272 high. Okay, next up is the splash screen. This is another one I get asked about all the time. If we go into the images folder, that's where the splash screen is determined. Let's go back and look at my radio and I'll show you what a splash screen looks like. I'll turn the radio off and I'll turn it back on. And as I boot it up, this screen, the first one, that's, that's the splash screen. The one that had the flag and the pilot John Hockey, that's the splash screen. So you determine what the splash screen is by putting a file in your images directory. Again, it's called images, and that file is called splash.png. There you go on the, on the computer screen, you can see that's the splash screen that loads on my radio. And again, special file format on this one, it has to be 480 by 272. So 480 by 272, and that's the splash screen. That's the screen that determines what you see when you first turn the radio on. Okay, next up are images in the image folder. And these are the images that are available for you to select on your radio, just like I've got on the radio on the desk, that little Corsair. That image is provided in the images directory on the radio. So I'll just bring up a Mustang for an example. There's a P-51 Mustang. Uh, I've got a Sector 5 and a Vanquish and a couple of others. But these are the model images you can use when you set up your models in the radio. There are size requirements for these as well. I'll right click on this Vanquish and show you. We look at the details. This one is a size of 192 by 114. There is a little bit of latitude in the size, but not a lot. You do want to keep it around 192 by 114. Uh, if you get too far past that, sometimes they just won't display. Okay, the next special directory is the scripts tools directory. So let's take a look in there. And if we go to the radio real quick, I'll show you what it looks like on the radio. You press the system button and this screen shows you what's in the scripts tools directory. So if we click on scripts and then tools, you can see that I've got Crossfire Lua, that's right up top. I've got ELRS V2, that's right here. I've got the Fly Me to the Moon toolbox. You see what's going on there? Every one of these options in this tool screen is provided by a script that lives in the scripts tools directory of your radio. Okay, the last special file I want to show you is the radio YAML file. That file is located in the radio directory and it's called radio.yaml. The radio YAML file is where information about your radio configuration itself is stored. So this includes data about your calibration, about your global functions, about your backlight settings, about your metric versus imperial options. All of that stuff is located within 
the radio slash radio YAML file. Again, this is a plain text file. You can read it and you can edit it. If you want to make changes within a text editor, you're free to do that. Just be careful and realize that if you mess it up, the worst thing that can happen is you'll have to set up your radio from scratch again. If you keep a backup though, you should be able to restore it just by copying your backup into your radio folder. All right, that wraps up my Edge TX snippet on special files you want to be aware of when you're navigating around in Edge TX. I hope you found the information useful, and if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. Thank <laughs> you.